Does anybody know what the most popular question in the world is when you talk to somebody? First service got it right away. Come on now, don't, don't disappoint me. What is the most popular com- start to a conversation? How are you? It leads to the world's biggest lie, which is, I'm fine, thank you. We're not. You know, I, I've learned over the years, we're not. I love, uh, I asked the first service and they told me no, but I'll ask again just to see if I get a different answer. Do y'all have parking lot greeters? You know, people that meet you out in the parking lot. A church we went to in Texas, we had this lady that she greeted people. It was her ministry. She greeted people in the parking lot. She had a mini pearl hat with the tag still hanging down on it, just like Minnie. And she, you would get out of your car, and she would just, hey! Hi. You know, you, you didn't know how to respond back, because if you watch, I love, last time I was here, I told you I love to watch people, because people are weird. They're strange. They do weird things. Well, I, I love to watch people, and if you watch in the parking lot at church on a Sunday, now, don't everybody do this next Sunday. Some people got to come in, you know, but... If you watch as people come in, you'll see the mom or the dad that's driving and they start to swerve a little bit right at the entrance of the car because they've just given the right hand of fellowship to the back seat to get them to calm down before you get onto church property. You know, hey, you you kids need to quiet down. You kids need to get it together. Get off of his side. Leave him alone. Quit talking to her. Don't look at her. We're fine. We are fine. Right? Been there? Done that? Happened this morning in our family, right? Um, But the the next most popular question that people ask is what time is it? What time is it? This morning I want to answer that question for you. What time is it? Time is something that I think we waste all too often. And I believe it's time. It is time for us as a church. It's time for us as people of God, to do things differently, to start living our lives the way that God has called us to live. I believe it's time for us to do things maybe a little differently. If you look at Hosea chapter 10, and before we do this, I'm going to warn you, we're about to take a Bible marathon. This is just one passage that we're going to go to. We're going to go to several, so be ready. Hosea chapter 10, verse 12, it says, Sow righteousness for yourselves and reap faithful love. Break up your untilled ground. It is time to seek the Lord until He comes and sends righteousness on you like the rain. Y'all, it's time for us to seek the Lord. It's time for us to fall on our face, prostrate at His feet, and say, Lord, help us. If not for our country, maybe for Vietnam, maybe for Germany, maybe for whatever other country. But y'all, I'm telling you right now, right here in the United States of America, we need Him. We need to be begging, God, please show me more of you. God, help me to know what you want me to do, what you want me to say. Seek Him. You know, did any of you go out in the rain? yesterday while it was raining my favorite place to be in all the world when a huge rainstorm comes in I told you already people are weird this is my weird thing okay I love to be at the beach I love to be in the water I love to watch the clouds roll in. I love seeing the rain start to fall. I love watching the lightning and the and hearing the thunder. And yes, I'm still in the water when all that's happening. I love it. You know why? Nobody else is around. It's just me out there. And I love it. And as the rain starts to hit me, I sometimes wonder, can I feel in that rain God's righteousness just pouring over me? Him just washing away all the sin, all the strife, all the, 
all of the things that distract me from him. The Bible says, seek the Lord. It's time to seek the Lord and let his righteousness fall on us like rain. One of the things I think we need to do different is be intentional about seeking him. In Ecclesiastes chapter 3, we see the Bible says, there is an occasion for everything and a time for every activity under heaven, a time to give birth and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to throw stones and a time to gather stones, a time to embrace and a time to avoid embracing, a time to search and a time to count as lost, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to sow, a time to be silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. The Bible tells us in Ecclesiastes 3, there's a time for everything. There's a time for everything. God appointed time for us. Do you know that? Look all the way back in Genesis. What does Genesis say? He created day and night, the sun, the moon, the stars, right? God made time. And you know, as he made time physically, don't look at your watches too much. Lunch is coming. It's okay. Not that time necessarily. Do you know he made time? Because the Bible says the word became flesh and dwelt among us. He made time to live with us. So that we could experience him one-on-one. Whoa. There's a time for everything. He has made time for our sake. And then he chose to give us time from him. How much time do we spend with him? How much time do we intentionally give to him each and every day? Well, let's look at another passage real quick. If you go over to Hebrews chapter 6, it says, Therefore, leaving the elementary message about the Messiah, let us go on to maturity, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works, faith in God, teaching about ritual washings, laying on of hands, the resurrection of the dead, and eternal judgment. And we will do this if God permits. You know, I think it's time for us to grow up. Did you see it in there? The maturity? You know, it's funny because so many of us still live on the milk. Have you heard Pastor Jared speak? When Pastor Jared speaks, I've heard him. The man is brilliant. When God gives him a message to speak, I promise you, I don't have to see what he does in his office. I can tell by what he does when he's behind this pulpit. He has devoted time to studying that passage, to making sure that he can give all the meat and potatoes that are in it, and to give you the history and the surrounding things that were going on at the time. And he, he, he does a great job. There's a lot of meat and potatoes there. Throw a little gravy on top, you got a good meal. But so many of us stay in the milk. It's not where God intends us to be. We need to grow up. Why? Because there's so much more to the Word of God than just the milk that we drink. You understand that God wants quality time with us. You know, one of my my wife's gifts is quality time. She can make time for people. It's uncanny. And when you have time with her, it may not be a lot 
of time, but the time that you do spend with her is quality time. I think sometimes that's what God wants from us. We get so wrapped up in the daily schedule and the daily routine that we feel like we've got to have, you know, our day planner, and I'm not picking on people that have those, but, you know, we get our day planner out and Oh, God, I've got 10 minutes right there. You can have that 10 minutes. I think sometimes God would rather have two minutes if it's going to be quality rather than just fitting him into your schedule. Quality time. We've got to grow up. We've got to see things differently. Well, then if you look with me at another passage, in 1 Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 says, Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up as you are already doing. It's time for us to build each other up. Have any of you ever experienced this? And I'm, I'm going to pick on you again. I'm, I'm sorry. But have any of you ever experienced this where we, we go to somebody and we go, Hey, how's life? How, how's your family? Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. Dad, I, I, I'll pray for you, my brother. I, 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 I'm praying. Man, I am hungry. You, any, you know any good places around here to eat? You see what I just did? How many of us do that? We promise somebody, oh, we're going to pray for you. And then we walk away and Move on, right? Y'all, I'm going to challenge you. While you're building each other up, stop right there. Hey, you know what? I'm going to pray for you and your family. As a matter of fact, can I do it right now? Would that be okay? Can we just pray? And, and after you pray, you may have to look at them and say, Hey, I really don't even know how to help. What can I do to help in this situation? Anything you need from me? Build each other up. We get enough of, and y'all look, I, I only, I'm only picking on him because I've been in the ministry and I know how it is in the ministry. Can I tell you, this poor guy has a job I don't want. Do you know one of the hardest jobs in church work is music? Because I promise you, they get... The music was too loud today. I just couldn't, I couldn't focus. My head was just banging with the music. I couldn't, I didn't know any of the words to any of those songs you picked today. I just can't believe you picked those songs. Oh my goodness. Did we have to do every verse on every song? Can't you just, I mean, don't you remember the good old Baptist days of let's do one, two, and four. We're going to skip verse three. You've been there, right? Or the other side of that is then you get some people that the battery in my hearing aid went out today and I couldn't hear a single thing you said. It just wasn't loud enough. Been there? Y'all, we got to build each other up. How about coming to him one Sunday and you might have to sit down if this happens. Come to him one Sunday and go, Man, you know what? I didn't know a single word on any of those songs, but I listened to the words. And oh my goodness, they ministered to me. I can tell you actually spent some time picking the set today. You were able to tell us what those songs were about, where they started. Y'all, build each other up. Because I promise you, once you go out those doors, there's plenty of people in the world that are waiting to tear you down. Build each other up. Strengthen each other for what's ahead. Well, then let me give you one last verse. When you look, you have to understand that, again, God has appointed time. 2 Corinthians chapter 6 says, Working together with him, we also appeal to you. Don't receive God's grace in vain. 
For he says, in an acceptable time I heard you, and in the day of salvation I helped you. Look, now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. What time is it? It's time for us as a country. It's time for us as a church. It's time for us as Christians to get our hearts right. To surrender our life to God. To say, God, here I am. Yes, God, this is all I have to offer right now. This is me. Take me. Change me. Mold me. Make me. Have me do what your will. God, let me surrender my will to yours. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day that some people may need to know for the first time, like you were saying in Vietnam. Boy, I guarantee you, if that young lady comes to Christ, there's going to be a day of great rejoicing. She's heard it how many times? But maybe just one more. Maybe just one more. When it's the day of salvation, let me tell you, that day, that time came from God for you. You understand he appointed that time for you. What time is it? It's time for us to start getting our lives in order. Because y'all, I'm telling you, if you look at the world events going on right now, There's not a lot of time left. Be ready. Because the Bible says in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, there's going to be a time when you're going to hear a trumpet sound. The dead in Christ will rise first and those that remain will be called up to be with him in the clouds. It's coming. Be ready. Because I'm telling you today, it's time for us to get right. Pray with me. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for the day. Thank you for all that you've done for us. God, thank you for the time that you have given us. God, that you have sent your Son to this earth to spend time with us, to give his life for us. And God, you've appointed a time for us to come to you. God, I pray that you would just help us today to get our lives right, to get our hearts back to you, to keep our focus on you. And God, help us to give you time. In your name I pray, amen.